We find ourselves here, at the beginning. Another tale, another chapter. It was quiet here, and quiet was exactly how Mike liked it. He thought about fumbling with the radio knob, but then thought better of it. Eventually the whir of the drill and the thunder of rocks being ground away would fade from between his ears. The Black Hills would take them from him. This place was good at taking. That rusty truck picked up speed, enjoying her mostly downhill drive. Fading light cut through the grit and shined on the dash, falling across a faded glossy he kept stuck there. He smiled at the picture. Sally and the girl smiled back at him, frozen in time just above the dusty AC vents. Perched on a chunk of southern granite, the littlest one wore a smile to match her mother's. They'd been done up all pretty. Sally had always cared about the pictures, and how the girls looked in them, especially the ones that might get posted. This one hadn't. This one he'd printed at a truck stop, not far from the state line. She'd have been angry if she'd known he had it. Her lawyer would have been too. It was a good thing neither of them knew it was here. Mike pried the paper off the dash and flipped it over, his fingers playing over the sticky back. Like a sedimentary rock can tell tall tales, so can tape balls. Sally and the girls had at least four states worth of tape residue built up. The base layer consisted of the cheap stuff from Texas. It had already started to turn to gel. That was when he got the call. The first of many. Mike turned the wheel with one hand, leaning in and watching the sun peak behind the Black Hills. They jutted up like the fangs of a snake, hungry for its kill. Sally's lawyers had teeth, a lot of them, and they knew where to sink them. They'd started small, little bites, like the fist-sized stones his truck rolled over. They snacked on his savings, devouring the cash built up over so many years, but they hadn't stopped there. There were motions to be filed and like some massive constrictor, those devils needed more. It hadn't been long before they unhinged their jaws and turned their attention to bigger things. Bigger things, like the girls. Mike pulled the wheel back the other way, the windy road between the hills coming like second nature the longer he stayed between their jagged peaks. After the Texas tape, there were a few streaks of Oklahoma, a trip to the plains that was only memorable for what didn't happen. He'd planned a flight home, an impulsive, last-minute shot at putting things back together. The restraining order and the cops holding it met him before he'd reached his street. He could rant and rave all he wanted, and he had, practically foaming at the mouth like that wild coyote they'd put down at a job site in Arkansas. That thing hadn't gone down easily, and neither had he. Mike tucked the picture up in his fingers and rubbed at the spot where they'd hit him with the taser. It had to have been years ago, but it still tingled from time to time. This was one of those times. The road took a hard left and Mike followed him without thinking. His mind had already skipped over the sweaty bits of Arkansas tape and the bloody lips of that dead coyote. He was far more interested in the Dakotas. Two thick lines of tape made up the windy north. It was truck stop tape. The good stuff. It would be there for the duration, even if Mike wasn't. He'd hired his own lawyer in South Dakota, spending hours and burning even more money he didn't have to get access to a retirement that was rightfully his. Mike's fingers caught on their sticky layer, hanging up like the lawyers that all but bled him dry. Whatever retirement he'd clawed back had long since become theirs. Something flashed on the trail. The truck's headlines catching the reflective glow of a hiker's vest. The girl inside it waved at him. She couldn't have been much older than Sally, her dark hair void of greys, and long enough to catch in the ever-present wind. Hikers got lost from time to time out here in the hills. The natives said that was a price we paid for living on their sacred land. Mike was always quick to point out that Great Spirit shouldn't have put his oil here if he didn't want people coming to get it. The oil was here. So Mike was here, 
She waved harder, jumping up and down like the girls who used to do when they wanted something bad enough. For them it was ice cream, or a new toy. Mike had the feeling this one didn't want either of those things. She'd want help. Maybe she lost her boyfriend between the hills, or her ride back to civilization. Mike toyed with the tape with his finger. Her dark hair moved like the siren song, guiding his truck off the dirt trail, sure as it had poured Ulysses' men from the deck. Being lonely had a price. Thank you. She grabbed his passionate door before the window was even halfway down. Tall enough to get her fingers against the glass, she leaned in to get a better look. Thank you, thank you. You're the first truck I've seen in hours. Mike sized her up, taking in the curves that remained well hidden beneath bulky thermal wear. Sally used to do the same thing, especially after the girls were born. But his ex-wife had to. This girl had nothing to be ashamed of. The top edge of a tight shirt poked out from beneath that vest, strained and hinting at greater things beneath. I think I got turned around. I've been out here for hours and my phone stopped working. Phones don't work out here. This was a quiet place. It had gone so quiet that Mike's brain took longer than he might have liked to catch up to what she was saying and to ask the right things in return. Spend enough time with nothing but yourself for company and words become foreign things. No signal. Right! No signal. She popped up and down like that puppy Sally had brought not long after he moved out. I need a ride. Can I get a ride back to town? It had been months since he'd seen another one, and it might be months before he did again. This was his chance. It had been more abundant during the summer months, but now, with winter coming, it could be a long time before someone even half as stunning showed up. Get in, he said, two words being roughly the top edge of his linguistic range at present. She bounded into the truck with the same gusto the girls would have shown, barely settling into the seat before she was up and at it again. I don't suppose you have anything to drink? Uh... It's okay if you don't. I've just been out here for next to forever, and I didn't bring enough water. So stupid, I know. But it happens. If you don't have- Mike threw the truck in park and opened his door. He had a few sugary sports drinks in the bed. Tucked up in a cooler that was anything but cool. In the summertime, he'd have them at the ready. Icy cold just in case he needed them. Now they were just lukewarm. Lukewarm worked. Mike popped the cooler open and removed two bottles, and fished something small out of the bottom of the box. He palmed the contents with a magician's skill. It was a move he'd practiced a hundred times. They'd be exactly where he wanted them. Exactly when he wanted them there. Practice makes perfect. He'd barely gotten the door open before the young woman had her hand out. Mike popped the plastic top, tearing open the seal and showing her the contents. It was a simple trick, but it put them at ease. What she didn't notice was the pills in his palm, or the way they dropped into the bottle just before he tightened the lid back on. Give it a few shakes, Mike said doing as much before he handed it over to her. Thanks. Sure thing. My name's Lee, by the way. What's yours? Bye. He dropped his sugary orange concoction in the center console, then turned the engine over. Well, it's a pleasure to meet you, Mike. Sure. He remembered the stick on his fingers, and photo he'd shoved in his pocket. He pressed the faded glossy back against the dash. I couldn't help but think it would be good for Sally to see this. Even dead, it never hurt to turn the screw just a little tighter. He held on to her prescriptions for years, the ones Sally had been given when she'd first started seeing the doctors. They were little pills, so small he'd almost have to squint to see them. They dissolved fast though, which was key. Keeping a few with him all the time was smart. For Mike, they didn't do much more than make him woozy, but the first time Sally had taken them, she'd been practically dead to the world. It hadn't been hard to find just the right time to use them again. The summer had been a few times, 
like learned a little more each time, like how to palm them, how to do a little magic trick, and how a little sugar covered the taste. Lee didn't seem to notice. Thanks. She wiped her mouth with her hand, leaving a faint orange stain on the back of those slender fingers. You don't realize how thirsty you get up here. Mike nodded, accepting the bottle back and setting it in the center console. His bottle sat next to it. The label nicked to remind him which was which. It wouldn't do to drive off the road before he'd reached his final destination. We pulled the seat handle and settled back into the soft cushion. You have any idea how long I was out there? No, I'm guessing a long time. The brunette turned and squinted her eyes. What year is it? It's. I'm kidding. <laughs> She added a soft little laugh for effect. It was the same sort of laugh Sally used to do. Before he accidentally snapped her neck. But I had been waiting a while for someone to come by. Mike nodded, his hands gliding smoothly over the truck's steering wheel. Stay cool. I bet you are. Not a lot of people end up in that part of the hills. The bulk of the Dread crew likes to drive a different way. They liked to do anything different if it meant staying away from Mike. That included taking the longer route. Had Sally been here, she would have told him why. She would have laid it out in exquisite detail. That's who she was. Sally was a planner, a detail-oriented woman. She was also stupid. Anyway, Lee stretched one arm out and then another, her vest pulling up just enough to give him a hint at the waistline underneath. I just got lucky, I guess. Damn lucky. Lucky. Yeah, we both got lucky. Now I can ask you about yourself. The slender girl drummed her fingers on the headliner. You know they teach us not to answer stuff like that, right? I didn't. Lee laughed. <laughs> You've got a family picture stuck to your dash, Dad. <laughs> I'm not worried. Sally smiled back at him from the faded glossy. She may have been stupid, but she was still plenty useful. I can let you out if you Lee pulled the seat release and shot back up. The pills doing exactly what they did. She got a nice burst of energy for a while, just like Sally did those first few times. She'd talk a lot about all sorts of things, but before long, they'd start getting blurry, confused. Her words would stretch out like pulled taffy. The girls liked taffy. No, I think I'll take the ride back into town, Mike. I've done enough. Walking. Smart. He nodded, settling into his seat. It would take a bit to get back to civilization. The pills were always at their best by then. Weather the storm. When he was a kid, he always hated Halloween. The masks, the costumes, hiding who he was never sat well with Mike. Just weather the storm, sweetheart. Mom had been right. Just hang on for the reward at the end. There was always a reward at the end. Thirty minutes of Lee talking rolled in one ear and out the other. The woman unraveling her life like the threads of his last sweater. It wasn't long before the truck rounded a tight turn and momentum pushed his swaying passenger against the glass. She's feeling it. He gently pushed down on the accelerator as Lee snapped the photo off the dash. So, Mike, do you like Mike, or should I call you Michael? Ah.、Uh, you don't look like a Miguel. Lee squinted at the picture and then at him. Nah, not a Miguel. What about Mikey? Mike's fine. Fair enough. Lee flipped the picture over and picked at the tape. Wow, somebody cares. Look at all that tape. It doesn't last. That's the heat, Mike. Well, the heat and the cold. I know about this stuff. She turned the photo back over. I went to school, you know. I'm not just some hot girl who likes to hike by herself. Lee paused, as if her brain were trying to catch up with the words coming out of her mouth. Mike contemplated whether they'd make the hotel before she passed out. He thought for sure she was a three-pill woman, but maybe not. Maybe just two. She was more fit than Sally had ever been. Maybe there was something to that.
Anyway, here I am just blathering on and on. Tell me who this sexy, sexy bitch is. Lee immediately slapped a hand over her mouth. Sorry, Mike. I didn't mean to call your girl. Wife. Shit! I didn't mean to call your wife a sexy bitch. Well, I mean, I did, because she's sexy as fuck, but, like, the bitch part wasn't meant to be like that. Keep her talking. The pills worked best when you kept them talking. It had Sally practically foaming at the mouth that last time. The more she talked, the less she thought. The less she paid attention. It's okay. I'm old. But I'm not so old I don't know the slaying. Lee pulled that long hair back. It was a move Sally used to do. Albeit Mike's ex-wife wasn't nearly as good at it as the young woman sitting next to him. You aren't old. You're seasoned. Lee slapped the picture a few times. I bet Mrs. Mike here thinks the same thing. I bet she wakes up and thinks, I'm one lucky bitch. Lee snapped her mouth shut. And this time it was Mike's turn to laugh. As the red had left her cheeks, Lee laughed right along with him. This was the best part about the pills. The fun part. The part where they liked him. Where they weren't afraid of him. When they got loose and carefree. It almost felt like something real. Even though it was anything but. Sally, Mike said once the laughter had died down. Her name is Sally. I knew a Sally back in school. My Sally was a real ass, though. I bet your Sally is different. Mike only nodded, pulling his drink out of the center console, which made Lee do the same. It was a little trick he'd figured out a year or so ago, back when he picked up his first hiker. He couldn't get her to touch anything, but after taking a few sips himself, a lizard brain had taken over. It was just like yawns. Thirst was catching often without even thinking about it. Lee wiped her mouth on her collar. The nip blew beneath that vest, darkening with drugged orange. Nice, nice. So let's talk kiddos. I'm counting two here. The girls. Do they have names? Mary Sue and Marvin. Lee stared at him for a few seconds, her mouth slightly open. Mike tightened his grip on the wheel. They weren't far now, maybe a few more minutes. He needed her awake, conscious, and walking with him. It wouldn't do for him to carry an unconscious woman to his motel room. There would be questions. The kid at the desk might not have noticed, but someone else would. The units all had eyes. Eyes that might think nothing of another woman provided she was on two feet. You're shitting me! Lee slapped a hand on his leg and didn't remove it right away. Mary Sue's my mom's name. Small world. The brunette nodded, leaving her oddly cool hand on his thigh. Not longer than he expected. Only a few more minutes, Mike. You can do it. Worth the storm. Sure is. He finally pulled her hand back, but it was slow enough to be deliberate. Now, Margaret, though, I don't know any of them. She's a good kid. The brunette nodded sticking Mike's picture back on the dash more than a little askew. She looks like it. Got her dad's big, sexy eyes. Unlike last time, Lee didn't put a hand over her mouth, and she didn't do anything to cover the swelling tension in the truck. Mike could barely contain his excitement, the last few turns and minutes ticking by excruciatingly slow. If Lee noticed, she didn't act like it. After what felt like forever, They rolled up to the motel and entered the spot in front of a unit. It was the same spot he'd pulled into with his dead wife in the trunk. The same one he'd rolled into with so many other girls since then. Lee detached her seatbelt, then leaned over the seat, both hands having no difficulty finding parts of Mike to hang on. So, who's up for some fun? Nice place. It's... homey. Lee sat on the edge of the bed. Her hands nowhere near the motel phone. It wouldn't have mattered if they were. Mike had unplugged it weeks ago. Back when he'd gotten a few suspicion calls from back home. Home. Home is where the heart is. 
and Mike's cold heart was at home here in the Black Hills. Sally was in these hills, quiet for the first time in their marriage. There were others here too, so many more, just as quiet. He liked the silence. So? Lee drummed out a little beat on her legs. What's a girl have to do to get a drink around here? Uh, I have some cheap beer in the fridge. Excellent! The woman popped up off the bed a good bit faster than she should have at this point. Cheap is my favorite brand. Watching her jean-covered butt shimmy back and forth in front of his motel fridge, I couldn't help but feel the growing tickle of anxiety tugging at the back of his mind, like Sally's dog had done to his ankle. She should be crashing hard. He tried to count out the pills again with his fingers when she shoved a cold can in his hand. Uh, thanks. No problem, mate. Listen, I like you. I like that strong, silent type. You feel me? Lee perched on the edge of the bed. Uh, I think so. Lee tossed back her head and plowed through a third of that beer in one go. I didn't need to count the pills on his fingers. Someone that skinny shouldn't still be upright. He'd brought back plenty of hikers, stranded drivers, and the like. None of them held up this long, and especially not the skinny ones. Good, good. So, while we wait for the liquid courage to do its thing, you mind if we play a little game? What kind of game? Mike tightened his fingers around the cold can. She should have been down by now. She should have been asleep. She should have been dead. People who stayed in his motel ended up with a snapped neck by this point. They sure as hell didn't play games on his bed. It's a guessing game. If I guess something about you right, you have to take an article of clothing off. If I guess it wrong, then I do. Deal? Mike hesitated still doing the mental math around just how many pills he'd stuffed in the bottle. Sure. Nice! Lee sprang off the bed and started moving around his tiny room, her feet almost shuffling on the shag carpet. Okay, okay, okay. First thing I'm going to guess... I'm going to guess you weren't born here. I'm going to guess you were born down south. You got an Oklahoma man vibe going. Mike frowned at his beer and at her, his mind playing pictures of her dead on the floor, that perfect little neck broken in two nicely portioned pieces. No, Amarillo. No sooner had he opened his mouth than he wanted to grab the words and pull them back. He never told anyone up here about Amarillo. Sally'd been born in Amarillo, and she died in his hands right here. Damn. Lee pulled down the zipper on her vest and tossed the cold weather clothing on the bed. She looked even better underneath that bulky top. Somehow both skinny and curvy, all at the same time. Okay, next question. So you're from Amarillo. Nice. I like it. Texas men. Good thing. She picked her beer back up off the cheap TV where it had left a perfect sweat ring. Mike was sweating too, just like that can. He chalked it up to stress. This was too long to have a woman in the motel room, especially one with her neck still not broken. Okay, next guess. She set the can back down and moved close. I bet you are a monster beneath the sheets. Are you a monster? In the bed? No. Again, Mike spoke without thinking. Haven't gotten it up in years. He stared down at the beer in his hand, then back at a slowly shifting Lee, her face blending softly with the muted hues of a cheap watercolor hanging on the wall. Oh, Mike. Lee pulled her belt off and tossed it on the bed. I'm so sorry to hear that. What is it? You need... Uh, Mike felt the can slip from his fingers and thumped nicely against the forever dirty shag carpet. Yeah. Lee gently pushed him back, his butt falling nicely onto the bed. 
He works sort of fast. Huh. Mike opened his mouth to speak, but the words that had come so freely before now weren't coming at all. Lee ran a cold finger down his neck and across his chest, tugging at the buttons one by one. Yeah, it's always slow until it's fast. You're a tough one to catch, Michael. You know that? Ike swung a hand, or at least tried to, but didn't accomplish much more than a wobbly shake. Oh, sweetheart. Look at you trying. That's so cute. Where was that energy in the hills? I mean, why bring me back here? Why not just snap my neck up there? Lee popped the two top buttons on her shirt, showing off her neck in exquisite detail. Soft skin gave way to something shiny the deeper he looked. I mean, it would have made so much more sense. I've always wanted to know why, you know? You threw down the first girl, which I now know is Sally, and I wondered... Why didn't he just kill her here? Lee tapped a finger on her chin. A chin longer than it had been before. Longer and more pronounced. I mean, I can see why you did it. God, even dead, that girl never shut up. But I think you knew that. I think shutting her up made it fun. Is that it? Amarillo man is making them shut up the fun part. Lee ground her hips into his. Is that the part you like? I bet it is. You threw me a lot of chatterboxes. That hiker with the big tits. Mm, she was a motor mouth. Same with that hitchhiker you picked up on the freeway. You remember the brunette with the skinny curves. Lee ran a hand over her chest, flesh falling away beneath her fingers. What had been large now wasn't at all. You do have a look, Mike. That's why I had to come and see you. I had to pop up and meet the man who'd kept me fed the last few summers. I had to see how he ticked. Scales shimmered along Lee's sharp face. I've got to admit, I'm not impressed. I mean, carrying around a picture of Sally? Really? Mike? He scrambled, trying to push through the fog and the haze. She was smaller than him. So much smaller. He'd snap necks bigger than hers. He just needed to fight through the drugs. How had she drugged him? The beer? The sports drink? Mike's head moved sluggishly from one idea to the next. Oh, that's so cute. You want to snap my neck? Okay. Let's see you do it. Lee picked up his hands and pressed them against her scaly neck. Do it, Mike. Snap that bitch. Snap it good. He tried. He squeezed as hard as he could his fingers not finding skin, but rock-hard scales. Ooh. She leaned in, her eyes no longer round. Come on, Mike. You can do it. Snap it. Snap it good. But he couldn't. He couldn't squeeze hard enough to make a dent in that muscled neck. She let his hand go and they collapsed on the bed. Weak and useless. Oh, somebody's just too tired. Lee's snake eyes and fanged-filled face pressed itself close. That's okay. I can take it from here, Texas man. You just lay back and enjoy the view. It took longer than she wanted to swallow him. But he did go down, eventually. She slipped out of the bathroom window and curled herself beneath the motel. When Seglia was old, she'd been here since the beginning, since the world was new. She knew the poisons of man, 
They were nothing to the mother of monsters. She would wait quietly, digesting him and his evil. There would be more like him. More men would come to her sacred place. The oil, her poison, would bring them, and her jaws would make sure they never left. And thus, the story is ended. The tale told. The chapter closed.